as if I spoke it into existence, there's assassins in Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Hey guys, it is Tyler here back once again with another Assassin's Creed Valhalla video. Two in less than a week, that's a record, which is exciting because a new trailer dropped for Assassin's Creed Valhalla. We're going to talk about that and more in this video because a lot of news and information has come out through this trailer, a story trailer about Assassin's Creed Valhalla. In this trailer, we don't just see Viking fantasy, we also get a glimpse at assassins or hidden ones which is a really exciting point and I'm a sucker for assassins iconography so just give a bit of a review and my thoughts on that trailer I mean I liked it it still focused way too much on the Viking side of things and most of it was about Vikings but there were story glimpses and hints to Assassin's Creed elements and the hidden one story involved in that but we didn't see much of Eivor actually doing assassins Creed type things. We saw Eivor in some sort of Hidden Ones Bureau, whether it's an old one or a current one, and you saw the Assassin's Insignia in the background. We also saw him wearing a hood, heading into a city and blending with other people with cloaks on. We've seen that before though, in some gameplay demos, so I don't really know how much else to say because it's not something new, it's the same thing we've seen again, the only extra bit of sort of iconography we saw was Eivor standing atop a building, putting on a hood. It's something, it's something. But the biggest feature in terms of the hidden ones is Basim, or Basim, I, again, does anyone know how to pronounce it? Someone fill me in please. But Basim, a hidden one, returns with Eivor's adopted brother Sigurd at the beginning of this trailer, so you sort of get a glimpse about Eivor and his relationships with his family. So you have Sigurd, his older brother, by adoption because Eivor's parents die when he's very young. You also get introduced to Sigurd's wife and a bit about their relationship as well as Eivor and Sigurd's relationship. Now, if I was willing to guess, maybe this is just speculation, but I'd imagine Eivor and Sigurd aren't going to be buddy-buddy, brother-brother, or sister-brother, depending on who you're going to pick to play as, for very long. I'd imagine you're probably going to kill Sigurd. I'd say I'm 99.9% .9 sure of that, just based on <laughs> how this is being marketed, especially with Eivor saying the line, I'm with you till Valhalla. It's like, yeah, you will be, because you're going to kill him. But Sigurd, his elder brother, returns from Constantinople, a very notable city in Assassin's Creed. Now, something I sort of want to get into, and I'll talk about it more later in the video, is there's already a lot of connections that we're starting to see with at least locations and ideas of previous Assassin's Creed games and settings. Of course, this game set in England. We've had a game in Syndicate set in England, specifically in London. London is a location in this game. Constantinople, a setting of Assassin's Creed Revelations that was written by none other than Darby McDevitt, the narrative director of, you guessed it, Assassin's Creed Valhalla. As well as, of course, this being set 300 years before AC1 and there being connections with Vikings interacting with peoples in the Middle East, potentially linking uh, Valhalla to then AC1 connection in the game. There's all these links we're starting to see with the hidden ones and previous Assassin's Creed games, whether it be connections with Easter eggs with Syndicate locations in the future, potentially, of course, the vault behind Buckingham Palace, the Shroud of Eden, potentially all that sort of stuff. That could be a location you visit. Who knows? Then you've got Constantinople. Do we go there at the end of the game? Does Eivor become an assassin and leave with Basim back to Constantinople to end the game? That then we sort of delve into the future and links into, oh, where are we going to go next? Of course, we're heading in to Assassin's Creed 1 300 years later with Masyaf. So there's all these links starting to happen. There is all these links starting to occur, and that's very exciting. And I'm just now playing around with it in my head in terms of the Assassin's Creed stuff, because, yeah, we get some Viking things. You see Eivor and his brother Sigurd, they're heading to England, where it's safer. They're not going to be fighting wars all the time. Oh, wait. Yes, they are. We get a first glimpse at King Alfred of Wessex, as well as Ragnar Lothbrok's sons, who are a separate faction throughout Valhalla, and I'm sure we'll be doing plenty of fighting, potentially allying with them at times, depending on what we need throughout the game. What we've seen from every trailer and every piece of marketing from Valhalla is this is mostly going to be a Viking game. And in terms of the major elements of the storyline, 
Eivor is going to be traveling to England with his brother in hopes of finding a new home. Perhaps Sigurd has a bit of a darker side to him. Perhaps he wants more out of England and he wants more than just a settlement for his family or a place to call home. He wants a kingdom of his own. Perhaps he pushes beyond what Eivor feels is right. There is always those arguments the Vikings were brutal people and murderers. Perhaps Eivor is not that sort of Viking and his brother is or becomes that and they conflict that way. But in the end, I just there's going to be a conflict between these two, two brothers or brother-sisters and there's going to be an element that comes to a head throughout the storyline. I know that for sure and perhaps that's what drives Eivor towards the Hidden Ones. And I'm sure Basim seems like he's going to be quite a bit in the background because what else we've known is that England is controlled by Order of the Ancients. Now, this is another thing, again, I'm going to bring up, this is again speculation, that might link to previous Assassin's Creed games with the Ezio trilogy specifically and Rome. So firstly, we know the Hidden Ones were a big part of the Roman Empire. Now we see in Assassin's Creed Origins, Amunet or Aya head to Rome and lead the Brotherhood of Hidden Ones there. Now in the 700, 800 years that separates us between the end of Assassin's Creed Origins and now in Assassin's Creed Valhalla, the Hidden Ones are still fighting the Order of the Ancients. In Assassin's Creed Valhalla, the Order of the Ancients have control of much of England and its background. Does that mean that King Alfred is a member of the Order of the Ancients or political people in the background of these kings of these different kingdoms of England are Order of the Ancients members, perhaps people in the inner circle of King Alfred, and that being in Wessex, but then you've got Mercia, East Anglia, Northumbria. So all these different kingdoms, the Order of the Ancients are going to have footing in all of them somehow, I believe, and have some background control that they're trying to influence the future. And especially when you're looking at King Alfred in Wessex, or the Kingdom of Mercia and East Anglia at times, is much of those uh, Saxon-controlled regions for many periods of time through this history. So the Saxons are Christians for the most part and are connected to Rome and the Pope. So perhaps that's where the Order of the Ancient Influence comes in. Now we've, we've seen Rome and the Christian religion a center of Templar control for centuries, millennia, from all the way in origins with the Roman Empire to potentially now in Assassin's Creed Valhalla and of course we see in the Ezio Trilogy Rome being the center of Borgia and Templar influence in Assassin's Creed Brotherhood and Assassin's Creed 2. So there's that link there with Rome and how the Order of the Ancients and Templars use that center of religious power to control much of the masses and political influence throughout the world. Now, the Pope and Rome still have much control over the churches through this period and hundreds of years beyond all throughout Europe. So that's nothing different in the period of time in Assassin's Creed Valhalla, especially with someone like King Alfred, who was a strong Christian, perhaps he's then influenced by the Order of the Ancients. Maybe it's him being involved or just the background. That's all I'm saying. But there's definitely a link there to Rome, the Christian religion, and political powers in Assassin's Creed Valhalla and the Order of the Ancients. That's all I'm saying. One other important thing I'd like to note is how Eivor gets the Hidden Blade. We thought, or assumed maybe, definitely incorrectly, that Eivor was given the Hidden Blade by a Hidden One. In fact, that's not the case. Sigurd, Eivor's brother, who travelled to Constantinople where he met the Hidden Ones and he brought Basim back with him, of course, to Norway at the beginning of this trailer and, assumingly, at the beginning of the game, it's Sigurd who becomes a big fan of this Hidden Blade and gives it to Eivor. Eivor then, of course, decides to put it on the outside wrist, not the inside, because Vikings believed in honor and being up front when they killed others. So they feel, or at least Eivor feels, that having a hidden blade on the inside of the wrist is deceitful. So Eivor wants them to be able to see that blade when Eivor uses it. I keep saying he or she, or I get confused of how I should say what Eivor is because they're both canon, but then also I keep saying he because in this trailer they use male Eivor. It's confusing. I'm just going to keep saying Eivor. Maybe I'll say he, maybe I'll say she. I'm just going to change it up all the time. It doesn't matter. Eivor is gender fluid, ladies and gentlemen. So the way this trailer ends, we've discussed all the different elements throughout this video of the Order of the Ancients being influences over the kingdoms in England at this time. We've talked about the Hidden Ones and Constantinople and the links there and Rome and the church and Sigurd and Eivor's rivalry. At the end of this trailer, we see Basim talk to Eivor about the control 
that the Order of the Ancients have over this kingdom, that there's deeper and darker secrets afoot, things that Basim knows about, and potentially that's why Basim came to this region of Norway and then kind of influenced Sigurd in moving to England because the Hidden Ones have their own agenda and their own footing that they need to get into the kingdoms of England to be able to defeat the Order of the Ancients. Maybe there's some greater plan going on here. Only time will tell, but... Bazim seems to see something in Eivor that he doesn't see in Sigurd that he's then trying to influence Eivor and what he's doing. I think they're going to be the conflicts potentially. It's the Hidden Ones versus the Viking. There's going to be that inner turmoil of who Eivor is going to become in this game. Because of course he wants to put his family first but then he sees what the, what's going on in these kingdoms. He sees what the greed of taking the lands is doing to all these people, the Saxons and the Vikings. So that conflict's going to be very interesting to see, and maybe that's what pushes him towards the Hidden Ones. All I hope is we don't have to wait the entire game to become an assassin. Please, let us be an assassin and wear robes. Especially Basim's robes that are fucking sick as shit, by the way, I just want to say. And all the artwork that they put out after this trailer needs to be the cover art, first of all, for the game, because it looks amazing. And it just so much reminiscent of old Assassin's Creed iconography, especially the Revelation stuff. There's a lot of things that feel like a Revelations connection, which I just, I don't think is a coincidence, especially knowing that the writer of this game was the writer of Revelations. Uh, so that's super, super interesting, especially as well when you link that there's a lot of comparisons between Edward and Eivor, at least in that they're one person that then get linked to Assassins, and Assassin's Creed Fallback Flag was also written by Dan McDevitt, who is the narrative director of Valhalla, so I don't think these are all coincidences. Darby's talked about the connections with all these games, there's going to be these connections to all these games. We're seeing it already. At least we're seeing potentials for there being links with cities, settings, people, time periods, all these different historical influences, where the hidden ones are, where the Order of the Ancients are, and where those could link and where they could lead to. There's a lot here. I'm excited about the assassin stuff in Assassin's Creed Valhalla. I always have been. I'm here for it. I want Assassins, I want Templars in Assassin's Creed Valhalla. That's what I'm looking forward to. That's the stuff I'm focusing on. Playing as a Viking is going to be fun. There's no doubt about it. No one's arguing that. But what I want to see in Assassin's Creed game is Assassins. I'm still not seeing enough of it. There's not enough of it. My, my, this hasn't changed my mind in the video I've just put out about the marketing being a, being a disaster. It still is. Especially after announcing the Sisterhood tattoo and then a day later you release a trailer with male live or only. Not that it really matters whether you put male Ivor or female Ivor in this trailer, because at the end of the day, you're not representing women with female Ivor, because you've also got a male Ivor, and it's choice. Representation is focusing on one. But that's a whole nother story, whole nother debate, which I talked about in a previous video. So, all I'm saying is, I want more assassins. That's what I'm saying. Your marketing's a disaster. That's also what I'm saying. But, it was still nice to see at least a little bit more of Hidden One stuff. Not that it was a surprise, we knew it was going to be in the game. We're just now seeing what it could mean, what it could influence, and what connections it can then make, while also telling us a bit more of the story. And I'm telling you right now, Eivor's killing Sigurd. That's done. That is done. That's written. I'll be shocked if that doesn't happen. I'll be shocked if that doesn't happen. Otherwise, an Order of the Ancient Members killing him really early in the game. It's one of those two things. But I'm pretty sure Eivor's killing him. That's all I'm going to say. That's all I'm going to say. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that's it for this video. I'm done talking about it. Let me know what you thought of this new story trailer and all this new info that's coming out about Assassin's Creed Valhalla. What are you excited about? Are you excited to see hidden ones? Do you want those Basim robes? Holy crap, I want those Basim robes. Please let us have them when we finish the game. Before that, let us have those robes before that. Let us take them from Basim. I'll kill him. I don't care. Just give me the robes. Let me play as Basim. That'd be sick too. Anyway, I'm going to stop rambling. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching. I will see you very soon with more Assassin's Creed content. Goodbye.